Hey guys, it's Deborah. You know those days where, maybe it's weeks, months, years, where you just feel like everything's catching up with you. You've had maybe a lot going on at work or home or perhaps you're going through a transition and stress levels are a bit higher than you want them to be. Well, I'm in that space right now. And when I'm in this space, I don't end up having a whole lot of energy. And that's absolutely okay because in life there are ebbs and flows and there are seasons. And just because I don't have a whole lot of energy, I don't have to go and jump into that all or nothing mentality headspace because when I'm there, then when I look at what I want to do in progressing my, my physical health and improve my physical limitations and work on my stiffness, then if I can't go all the way in, then I'm just not going to do anything. And through experience, it doesn't really work like that. And so what I have found is that when I just do one movement, it's better than doing no movement. And just because something is perhaps gentle doesn't mean it is as ineffective as something that's more intense. Again, there are so many realms to improving our health and our wellness for our body. There's strength work, there's mobility work, there's stretching and flexibility, there's balance, there's proprioception, there's stability, all this good stuff. So today, let's just go ahead and be gentle with our hips. We're gonna work on basic mobility work just to help loosen on up and I guarantee by the end of this workout you're gonna be a lot more familiar with what sensations you should be experiencing in your body when having your thigh bone in socket. Okay guys, so this is a beginner level workout. I'm gonna be giving a little bit more instructions to help you, okay? So thanks for joining me, go ahead and give yourself in this video a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, we have about a 13, 14 minute long workout. We have each of the moves we're gonna do for 50 seconds on, 10 second rest. That's gonna allow us to transition from each move safely and mindfully, okay? So come on down to your mat, we will begin. Let's start in a tabletop position, okay? I want your shoulders, your hands shoulders width apart and then have your shoulders over your wrist. You can bring the eyes of your elbows towards your thumb and press down into the base of your knuckles. Now the base of your knuckles will be where your fingers meet the palms of your hand, okay? When you do that, you'll instantly feel your forearms engage, okay? The next place you wanna focus and engage is your upper abdominals. That will help you now stabilize the upper body. The entirety of this workout, we are not working with our upper body. I want us to be stiff. We're not moving anything in this direction. We are stiff staying stable here for our upper body, okay? Everything that's gonna be in the lower thoracic lumbar region of our body and of course our pelvis. All right, now that we have our upper body stable, when it comes to our lower body, I like to tuck my toes under if you wanna keep your toenails down, that's absolutely fine. I just find it helps me stabilize my pelvis a little bit more, especially since I have crooked, twisted hips and I'm really working on trying to level them off or just find that place of levelness. They don't necessarily stay there yet. Okay. When you tuck your toes under, widen your outer hips so we can create space. Press down into your big toes and then lift your abs off of the ground. Draw your inner thighs back. That's gonna help stabilize the thigh bone or move the thigh bone a little bit more evenly into your hip socket. Again, if your hips are unlevel, you're gonna have to play around, maybe shimmy side to side to get a little bit more of that sensation. Our first move is designed to help us get more familiar with what a neutral pelvic tilt is because that's what we need to have in um, order to basically work with our pelvis in healthy ways. The best way I like to do that is to move through our opposite end ranges of motion. That would look like from our neutral tilt here, our tabletop, we're going to stick our butt out, interiorly tilting, and then the opposite direction of that is rounding into the lower back and posterior tilting here. Again, we see this a lot with our cat cows, but we're not moving from the upper body. We're isolating those two movement patterns in just the lower region. 
as you move side to up, up and down, you'll be able to get familiar then what neutral feels like for you. Here we have 50 seconds. Let's go ahead and just move through these two end ranges. And by the end of this segment here, we shall be in our neutral tilt. This is your time. Again, it should be soft, I guess, if you were to put your hand in your crease. You want it to be soft so that the thigh bone's not coming out. You can engage your glutes just a little bit. You don't want to overly engage them because they're just there to stabilize your pelvis, but you can begin to tone them in these movements. Beautiful, just like that. When you are getting more to your neutral pelvic tilt, now you can feel nice and stable. What we're just going to do now is take small circles with our lower body, okay? Moving in one direction. Yeah, now if you're feeling any clicking or popping, don't go as deep. If you're working twisted hips like I am, move very slow. Notice if your toes are not wanting to stay put. Ooh, when I slow down, oh, I get so much more information. I'm real tight on my left side, guys. Ooh. But all of our bodies are different. Whew. Learning. Learning where our stiffness is, how to use our abs. This is all good stuff, guys. All right, let's take our leg on up. We're gonna point our toes. We're gonna just trace our toes with our eyes. We're moving a lateral side bend for our spine. That's another movement pattern that is happening. But in this case, we're also mobilizing our hips, waking everything on up. Think about using your thigh bone like um, a rudder or a tail or a gear where it is staying in its respective socket and everything around it is loosening on up. Do you guys feel any of your muscles releasing? Because I do. And I know I would. I have such stiff hips and my pelvis is very unlevel. So every time I do these movements, I do learn a little bit more. I'm very stiff. All right, then we're gonna go the opposite direction now. So same tail wag, but we're going to follow and trace our eyes with our toes on the other side. So a little bit more side bend for the other direction. Yeah. This way is a little bit easier for me, but I think because I'm pulling my pelvis with me, when I <laughs> try to engage my, in this case, my left glute a little bit more to help stabilize, it's a complete different experience than when I let the muscle go and my hip follows me into the twist. Ooh. You guys feeling that? It's very challenging working with twisted hips. I find it's hard to keep up in fitness classes and I don't maximize the effectiveness of any moves unless I slow down. We're gonna make small circles, okay? Use your lower abs to engage. We're moving on this one side still. All right. I feel crooked, so I'm gonna move just a little bit to help myself try to find an even distribution of my weight in my upper body. Don't forget to press on those base of your knuckles, guys. It will help save your wrists, I promise. All right. Ooh. Circle away. Circles are so helpful, whether I'm doing them with my legs, my arms, my wrists, my elbows, they're, uh, they really do loosen everything on up. 
All right. You need to give your wrist a break for a quick second. We're gonna make bigger circles now, okay? I'm gonna go all the way on out using a bit of glute engagement. So you can even come up like a fire hydrant, up, down, moving up, out, down, out, up, down. I like that. Whew. This is mobility work here, guys. One of my favorite movement patterns to practice. Nothing in my upper body is moving. Everything is coming from my lower body. And I feel that work. You feel it? Oh, good. All right, we'll lower that down. Give your wrist a little flick. Come back on out to tabletop position. We're going to take our circles in the other direction again. All right, now stabilize the upper body. We're just moving the hips. All right. This is where we can begin to do a little bit of comparison. Comparison thinking can move us into a negative headspace very quickly, but in this case, I want us to get familiar with one side compared to the other in terms of allowing us to have more knowledge on the condition of our hip. All right. Feels really good to be gentle today, <laughs> not rigorous, but a lot of goodness is happening here. All right. Ooh, all right, feels pretty good. Back to that neutral position. We're gonna lift our leg on up. We're gonna follow and trace with our eyes. My left side, whenever I move in this direction to my right, my left side, upper body wants to usually come with it. <laughs> the idea is to just have that movement come from the lower body. You feel a little bit more loose there? Yeah. Gentle work. It is all part of all the things we can do for our body. There's days for strength, days for balance, days for proprioception, days for flexibility, and there are days for gentle mobility. It's all part of the journey. I am so stiff. All right, we're gonna go, I'm so on level, other side now, okay? Following and tracing. So as we integrate the side, bending or our lateral spinal movement, then we're learning how to train the right muscles to activate and the wrong muscles to deactivate. Yeah, I feel like I lose my glute connection whenever I do these. And that's valuable information because again, the glutes are a big part of stabilizing the pelvis. So it can be the very reason why when I move in certain directions that I can't maximize its effectiveness. Yeah, because I just gotta keep practicing. All right, good job. That was really, really good. Now we're going to move into our hip circles. So just bringing the leg on up to those small circles. I feel twisted on this side too. So let me play around a little bit more. I'm losing my knuckle connection. So I'm gonna go back there, lift my abs. That feels a lot more stable now. All right. Still toning my glutes, still trying to widen my hips and spiral my inner thighs. That's gonna help make room. And then it's gonna make room so that I can engage my lower abs more 
and which my hip flexors will like because that means they'll, they'll relax a little bit more. All right, so for our bigger circles, we're gonna come out, up, and down, okay? Out, up, and down. Out, up, and down. Try not to take this into your upper body. You're keeping it in the lower body, guys. We're doing so good, come on. A few more exercises after this, but this is very good work, guys. You feel it? I know I'm feeling it. Oh, I just love mobilizing. I'm gonna feel so good. Counteract all the sitting I've been doing, and I definitely slept funny last night. Whew. Oh, I got a big release there. Feels so good when that happens. My muscles let go, the right ones are engaging, and the move of boost becomes freer. Again, that's what it is, guys. Finding the freedom in your body's mobility. All right, we're gonna come into a frog position. This is a little bit of a harder position, and we're gonna toggle back and forth, okay? I'm gonna bring my hands on up, because this hip is definitely twisted more. So don't go as deep. Keep both thigh bones in socket and move. Shimmy, shimmy, just back and forth very gently, okay? You'll feel it in your inner thighs too. That's absolutely fine. This is a good groin stretch, a groin, mo groin mobility. But since everything is all connected, then I don't know about if you're like me and have twisted hips, but when I do these, I can feel my hip fighting me and wanting to move out of alignment. So I'm not gonna go as deep, but I'm gonna be able to just move within that spot that's safer for me. Let's come on up to a little bit of a wide fold and move side to side. If you're not able, use some blocks or props, just if it doesn't need to come down to the edge, your hands to the mat, that's fine if you need to be on up. If your wide leg is not as deep, don't go as deep, bring your feet closer together. Get my thigh bone in, get my thigh bone in. See, they don't evenly go in at the same so I just gotta articulate each side differently. Retrain the muscles to go through a new movement pattern. And you know what that takes? Repetition, dedication, commitment, patience, and uh, a willingness. All right, now let's come on up to a forward fold. We're just going to bend and lift, bend and lift bend and lift. So think about widening your hips, inner thighs are moving back, abs up off of the ground, okay? Hands can be on thighs, beautiful. Feel that. Listening guys, I'm cracking and popping. Not gonna go as deep. Good forward fold is always the best. It is a little strength work here, but that's absolutely fine. We gotta wake up the hamstrings as well. Come on, almost there. Last one. All right, now you can come in to a forward fold. Forward fold is the same thing as your tabletop. All we did is remove our hands, so we're not interior tilting too much. We're not posterior tilting too much. We're back to that neutral spot. And we're allowing our body, the back of our legs to release. Find your fold if you're up here, no problem. Keep lifting your heart out. And as you feel ready, you can allow your body to relax. Gently breathing in. Lengthen on your inhale, lifting out. Lengthen that 
lower spine, that lower thoracic spine as well. Oh, and fold. Beautiful, guys. Inhale into your nose. Exhale. Bend your knees if you need to. Lift your sit bones to the ceiling. And let's come all the way on down. Whew. I mean, just because it was gentle didn't mean it wasn't hard, right? How much more aware of you are, how much more aware are you of your thigh bones and the condition of your hips? I would love, let me know in the comments below what you discovered and um, if you have a twisted hips like I do or one pelvis is unlevel and if you experienced that in today's workout. I thank you so much for joining me here today. That was a lot of great work. Truly congratulate yourself because just because it wasn't a really hard workout today, you got it done. You're building that momentum and thank you so much for choosing to do that with me here today. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I know I needed it and now I can go take a nap. <laughs> really though, uh, I appreciate it guys. That was a lot of fun. Thank you, thank you, thank you and I will see you in the next workout. <laughs> Bye.